Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this Elementor tutorial, I'm going to show you a fun way to add custom CSS animations to your images. I came across this website right here called transition.style. This website's going to make it really easy to grab the CSS of some of these pre-built transitions over here. And then I'm going to show you how you can grab that CSS and add it to your Elementor images. So as you can see on the right side, if you click on any of these, it's going to show you what the transition does. And you can see it automatically is going to copy the CSS code for each of these transitions. So that's what this tutorial is going to cover is, you know, how I take that code and add it to your Elementor website. And here's an example of what we're going to be pulling off in this tutorial. I'm going to have three different images with three different transitions. So I'm going to show you in real time what this looks like. So what I want to do is I want to trigger these CSS transitions when the user scrolls halfway down the page. So you're gonna notice where my mouse is right here. Once this section hits 50% of the browser, kick in that animation. So let me show you what that means for the first one. The first one is just a simple image like wiping up. The next one is gonna kind of do like the square like reveal when you scroll. And then the next one is gonna be a circle and the whole image is gonna fill up the whole screen. So let me show you what that means. So when you scroll down here, so if the user scrolling, it has this cool effect where it's going to grow when the user scrolls down. This tutorial will be using a little bit of JavaScript to pull off that scroll effect. But if you don't have much experience with JavaScript, don't worry. I'll show you what all of this code means as we go on. So here we are on the back end of that page. And what I like to do is show you how I have this whole page structured out. And I like to label everything first. And then we'll jump into the uh, JavaScript and the CSS. So as you can see right here, I have it separated out into four different sections. This first section is just kind of like this blank area right here. So what we're going to be just targeting are these three sections right here. This first section is just kind of like filler. So the user has to scroll down, but let's go ahead and show you how I have all these things set up. So it's just a normal section right here, two columns, one image, you know, it's as simple as that. Uh, the same thing, I just have it swapped. And then this last one, instead of the two columns, I just have the one column with this one big image. So you can just see right here, it's just that one image. So what I'm going to do is show you how you have to label everything first, and then I'll jump into the code and how everything's set up. So the first thing you need to do is give each one of these sections a unique uh, CSS class. So do that first. So if you go underneath section, I'm going to just call it panel one. The second section right here, I'm just calling it panel two. And of course, the third panel is just called panel three. And same thing with your images, just give it a unique name. I'm gonna keep it very simple. I'm just calling it image one, image two for the CSS. And the big one is an image three. So do that first and then we're gonna jump into the JavaScript. Let's get the hard stuff out of the way. Then we're gonna jump into the CSS. And if you scroll up to the top of this page, you're gonna notice I just have this HTML widget. So if you've never really played around with JavaScript and Elementor, what's cool is you could just drop in an HTML widget and then you can put in your custom CSS class. So it doesn't really matter where you put this code, it just has to be on the page somewhere. And here is the CSS code right here and all of the code will be in the description below. So you can literally just copy and paste this and it should work as long as you label everything I just showed you where it's panel one, two, and three, image one, two, and three. So let me just quickly go through this code so you can kind of better understand how this works. So right in the beginning, uh, this is just basically telling JavaScript, hey, when the, when the user's scrolling down the page, you gotta listen for that. And what we're gonna do is this very first one called panel, and then you can see right here, this is the CSS class called panel one. This right here is just declaring this uh, value right here, and then you can reference it down here. So you need to just make sure that you have it just like I have it right here. Panel one equals that panel one CSS class. Panel two, this right here, the CSS class. And then same thing with the image. Uh, I'm just keeping it very simple so you can understand. Uh, this function right here, image one, is equal to the class of image one. Okay, so that's that part. When well, you gotta get that part working correctly or none of this is gonna uh, work. And then the next thing is you see this two right here? This is basically telling the uh, JavaScript code that once the scroller gets to 50%, which is uh, divided by two. So if you just have it at one, you see where my mouse is very in the bottom, that's considered one. And then if you split that in half, that will be cut in half. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. But if you want to have it where the user is about 50%, you would just change this to a two. Uh, so yeah, once 
the section right here gets to about 50% of the height of the browser, it will kick in these functions down here. And you don't really have to worry about too much of this stuff right down here. You just got to change out a few different uh, variables here. And you can see right here, they all look the same. Just a few different things are changed. So if you're going to go ahead and copy this code and add your own classes, the only things you really got to change is this right here, this right here, which is image one. And then what we're going to do is in the next part of the tutorial, these are going to be the CSS classes that we're going to uh, call. So you just need to literally change these three values every time you want to have a new image. So if you're going to have two more images in here, you would go ahead, add two more of, or you would add one more panel code, one more image code, and then you would add two more of these sections. So you can literally just copy that, paste it twice, and then just match everything up. So that's kind of the hard part. Um, you don't have to worry about every single thing about this code. Uh, you just got to understand kind of how it works and basically what it's doing is when a user scrolls 50% of the browser, this panel, once that hits 50%, it's going to add this class right here that we call it up here. Let me show you right here. So once the second panel hits 50%, which was that two right here, it's going to add this CSS class to that image called image two. I know it's a little complicated, but once you kind of understand that what it's doing, it's not that complicated. So once the user scrolls 50%, this image two is now going to get this custom class right here. And then the CSS that we're gonna do in the next part of the tutorial is gonna be triggered. So let's go ahead and just jump into the CSS and show you how I have everything set up. So now I'm underneath the page settings. You can see under advanced custom CSS, I have our animations right within here. So most of this code is coming from the website that I showed you right here. So let me go ahead and let's do the very first one called wipe in up. So this one right here, if you go underneath uh, wipes, you can see up. So when you click it, you can of course see the animation going up. So here's what the CSS code looks like when you uh, click on each one of these transitions, it puts it in your clipboard and then you can paste it into your editor here. But I just wanted to show you, you know, bigger text right here. And there was two different things that we have to do first. The first thing we need to do is remove this section right here and just give it a unique class. So in this case, I just called it uh, image wipe, I believe you could see right here. Uh, I just called it image wipe. So now we're back at the code. And then what we need to do is actually, we're going to remove this uh, from clip path. Uh, and then what I'm going to show you is uh, just copy this right here. And then what you can do is remove it right here. So you can see on the left here, I just have it going to. So basically the reason why I'm doing that is because if you don't have that on the image itself, what it's gonna happen is it's gonna appear first and then kind of glitch. So now I'm on the front end of the page and let me show you what that looks like when you don't add that code. You can see right here, before the user gets to the 50%, they can already see the image is loaded. So what we need to do is tell the browser, don't, show this image until we hit the 50%. And so we need to actually kind of hide it and then animate it to something. So in this case, we want to animate it to, uh, it's called inset 000. So, so it needs to animate from something. So let me show you what this means. So you're going to notice when I scroll down, it's going to glitch. It's going to sh show and then disappear and then show again. So we don't want that because we want to have it look like this. So when the user scrolls, it's nothing. And then the image will slowly appear. So this was the only part that I was a little bit confused at at first, but once you understand that you need to remove the from clipping path and just add it to the image itself and everything should work fine. So in Elementor Pro, I'm just gonna go down into the custom uh, CSS, just type in selector and then just add in that clipping path, the from, and then you can erase it from the CSS right here. So let me go back into here and you can see I had it in here as the demo just delete that. So all of your keyframes are now just going to go to the end clipping path. I hope that makes sense. And then here's the uh, part of the code where we just put animation. We have it at five seconds. We have it doing this little easing and let's just hit update. And now you're going to notice that that glitch is going to go away. So once I hit refresh, if I scroll down, you're going to notice that it's at zero right now. So it's kind of like hidden. And then when the user scrolls, of course, it's going to scroll up. And to recap, you just want to make sure that all of your CSS classes right here 
match up correctly. So we have image wipe, uh, hesitate, and then down here, I just called it like circle grow. So if we go back into the uh, JavaScript, you're gonna notice right here, that's where these classes are being added. So it's saying add class, image wipe, hesitate, circle grow. So you, if for some reason this stuff doesn't work, always just kind of check back and make sure everything is spelled correctly, make sure there's no spaces. It needs to match up perfectly or it's not gonna work. So let me scroll down and show you how, you know, this is uh, just image one. This has the selector with the clipping path. And then same exact thing down here. I just wanted to show that this can work with multiple transitions. So we have it at image two. And this one has the clipping path um, it starts at 100, 100, 100, and then it goes to zero. So let me show you what that looks like. And this one is under squares, and I just click this button right here. So you can see it does this little slow grow. I have it at pretty slow, at like five seconds, but this is what that code looks like when you paste it into the website. So you can see uh, this one is a little bit different. It actually goes to 40% and then 100% for the keyframe animation. So like I said, this is what we put always on the image itself and then remove that. And then this one goes to 40% at 33% inset and then zero. So if you look right here underneath our CSS, you're gonna notice that we have the 40% and then it goes to 100%. So that kind of gives it like that uh, pulsing animation where it goes slowly up. So that's what's right here. And then you can see right here, we can change um, any of these I don't know, settings. It's all CSS, so you can do whatever you want with it. So if you want it to go a lot slower or faster, you could just change that value right here. So let's make this a lot faster. Let's do one second. I'll hit update, and then I'll show you that when the user scrolls to the second section, it's going to go really fast. So if I scroll down, we have the very first one. It's at 50%, goes up, and then here comes the second one. It's going to come in a lot faster. So you can see how quick that was. So that's what's cool about CSS animations. You can just change this to kind of fit, you know, your image or your section and it, you can do whatever you want with CSS, which is great. And let me just move into the bottom one and show you that you can do this to a, a large image as well. So it's exactly the same thing. Um, and this one, we just have a clipping path and then this starts with a circle at 0%. So if you go back into this website underneath circles, I believe I just clicked this one for center. And then this is what that code looks like. Uh, you can see the clipping path. This is on the image. So I remove that. And then you can just change your styling here. So if we go back into the CSS. You're going to see right here. Um, yeah, the two is just going to 125%. So it's growing outside of the main image right here. So you can always change this to 100% if you want, just to see what that looks like. So what that's going to do is probably not go all the way outside the boundaries of the image. So let me see how that looks. So if we scroll down, you see I have a nice slow animation and then yeah, it still goes. So if some of the CSS code um, doesn't look correct, you can just manually change it right here and it will still load correctly at 100 percent. And what's really cool about the CSS code is you're not just limited to images. You can actually attach this to different sections, any other widgets you want. So that's what's, so that's what's really good about the CSS code is you can attach it to anything. So it's basically the same exact thing. So instead of an image, if you had like a contact form or something, you could just throw that widget in here and just do the same thing. And that's it for this Elementor tutorial. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.